everyone had an amazing weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Ah, that's nursing school for you. Yeah. Well, I spent the weekend surfing with my brother. Ooh. I worked a shift at the ER. Ooh. And I went to an amazing seminar on proper ambulance placement. Oh, wow. Yeah, great. So today we're going to be talking about anticoagulant medication. I hope you all printed out the slides I sent. Oh, and your PowerPoint. Well, I ran out of ink. <laughs> well, I, I know. My paper. <laughs> I know there's a lot of slides. I think there's 26 pages, but don't worry, we've got 30 minutes to get through them all. Oh man. Oh, okay. Anything we don't finish, I'll just email you. <gasps> okay, so let me just get this. Uh, let me just get this computer up and going. Um, give me one second. I'm sorry. Um. Hold on, let's see. Uh, so, anticoagulants, huh? Looks like we're going to be hmm. we're going to talk about Coumadin and Pradaxa hmm. today. I've heard about Coumadin, otherwise known as Warfarin, but I don't think I've heard about Pradaxa. I guess we'll be reviewing it once the slides are up. Uh, um, um, let me see. Oh, oh, there we go. Got it. Okay, class. We will first start with Coumadin. How many of you have worked with patients on Coumadin before? Me. Me. Mm -hmm. Me. Excellent, excellent. So Coumadin is an oral anticoagulant which inhibits factors along the clotting cascades that are dependent on vitamin K for synthesis. It is used in the prophylactics and treatment of venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms, atrial fibrillation, and embolization. It is also used for the management of myocardial infarctions, also known as MI. It decreases risk of death, decreases a risk of subsequent MI. And um, let's see, that's oh, a, oh, 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 yes, oh, yes. Oh, me. Yes. Me. Kim. Yeah, it also decreases risk of future thrombolytic events, prevention of thrombus formation and embolization after prosthetic valve placement. Yay, good to go, that is correct. Yay. Someone did her reading, I see. Yeah. Now, Coumadin also has many drug-drug interactions. There's quite a bit, so those are all in your book, but I'll go over a couple right now. Some that you might see in lab are NSAIDs and aspirin. Um, NSAIDs and aspirins increase the response to warfarin and increase the risk of bleeding. This, Ooh. Yeah, I know. Wow. Chronic use of acetaminophen may increase the risk of bleeding also. Chronic alcohol ingestion may decrease actions of warfarin. Hmm, interesting. Hey, can someone tell me what, when we're talking about warfarin, the G's are? Me, 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 me. Oh, yes, me, Kim. Me, 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 Kim. me, me. Oh. Yes. Um, garlic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ginger. Uh-huh. Ginkgo. Uh-huh. And ginseng. Yay! Yay! Someone really did her reading this weekend. I read the whole book. Awesome. Because of this, this, it is very important to know what other medications your patient is on and whether or not those meds interact with Coumadin. Now, who can tell me how, many, how we monitor Coumadin and its effectiveness? We look mm -hmm. at the patient's mm -hmm. PT and... INR, particularly the INR. The PT is a lab that measures the seconds for a clot to form, and the INR is an international normalized ratio where we have goals for the patient depending on what, why they are taking Coumadin. Wonderful. Now, you might want to raise your hand next time. <gasps> okay. uh, moving on to the next slide. And we, oh, huh. Let's see, oh shoot. Seems the computer went down. Give me a second to work this out. I'm sorry. Let me see. Um. When I was in clinical last week, my instructor and I did patient teaching on Coumadin. Oh, yeah? What did you teach her? Oh, you know, just the main side effects to look out for, like bleeding, bruising, having black stools, or hematuria. Also, we talked to her about her vitamin K intake and that she should be aware of what foods have vitamin K in them and try to maintain her intake as either a dramatic increase or decrease in intake that can lead to changes in her blood coagulation. What kind of foods have high amounts of vitamin K? Well, there's dark leafy greens, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, all that smelly stuff, and even prunes. Ew, prunes. Hey, do you guys know why a patient shouldn't be on Coumadin? Well, the obvious is someone is actively bleeding but also if they have severe liver or kidney disease or uncontrolled hypertension. Interesting. Hmm. Ah, got it. Okay, we're back and running again, guys. Sorry for Ooh. that. 
Uh, sounded like you guys used your time wisely and continued our discussion on Kumadin. Is there any other questions we have before we move on to the next slide? Me, me, oh, me, oh, 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 me. Oh, yes. Me. Yes. Oh, uh, I heard that Coumadin is a high alert medication, but what does that mean? Well, can someone explain to Kim what that means? Well, it means the medication has high risk of serious harm, so you need to have a second nurse check off, check off the medication before you give it to a patient. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see on the next slide. Oh, very good. Now, before moving on, I thought we'd break up our lecture a bit with some pictures of my little grandbabies. Aren't they adorable? Aww. Aww. Oh, oh, it's, shoot, see, my computer died again. I, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, my grandma is on Pradaxa. She is on it because she had a stroke over a year ago and has a history of atrial fibrillation. My mom was glad Granny was put on it, as she would always complain about driving her to all of her blood draws when she was on Coumadin. Plus, we think she was a rabbit in a previous life, as she was obsessed with leafy greens and asparagus. Asparagus? Hi, Texas. It also has vitamin K, mm -hmm. which with Pradaxa, you don't have to modify you. your diet. Thank you. Why doesn't she have to get her blood drawn for Pradaxa? Because Pradaxa has what you call a predictable effect, and it can't be monitored by an INR lab. Oh. That sounds great for her. Why? What could be the downside of that? Well, Mom was a bit freaked out when she found out she could not, you cannot reverse the effect of Pradaxa with any medications in case Granny took one too many of her pills. Is there an antidote for Coumadin, though? Yep. Vitamin K can reverse the effects of Coumadin. With Pradaxa, you just have to let your body take care of it, and hopefully you will survive to see another day. <laughs> okay, forget it, class. I'm sorry, we're seeing how computer issues. We're gonna go the uh, old school style right here. Let me get out my marker. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, hmm, all out of ink. Okay, well, I'll continue our lecture while you take some notes. I'll give you some guided imagery towards the end about my latest visit with my grandkids. Okay. Pradaxa is also an oral anticoagulant that acts as a direct inhibitor of thrombin. Its common side effects are abdominal pain, diarrhea, dyspepsia, gastritis, and be sure to assess for any sort of hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis. Concurrent use of Pradaxa with other anticoagulants, antiplatelets, NSAIDs, can increase the risk of bleeding. Pradaxa is used to reduce the risk of thrombus in patients with AFib. We talked about that already. Eric told us about her grandma being on Pradaxa. Oh, you guys did talk about Oh, did you guys talk about how you don't have to do? <laughs> we talked about that already. Eric told us about her grandma being on Pradaxa. Oh, did you guys talk about how you don't have to do a blood draw? Yes. yes. Oh, well, what about how ER staff doesn't like it as it doesn't have an answer to Yes. Oh, well, did you guys talk about converting to Pradaxa from Coumadin? No. Ha! <laughs> well, when someone is going to be transitioned to Pradaxa, you want to wait until their INR is less than 2.0. Oh, oh, okay. You might also want to assess your patient for signs and symptoms of stroke or PVD. Can anyone tell me what PVD stands for? Peripheral vascular disease. Oh, very good, Kim. Periodically during treatment. Now, for the most important part of lecture, give me one second. Amulets! Yay! Yay! For everybody!